Today, we are going to look at building out our variable library to include the latest release of Figma variables. So looking at our effect variables, so things like our positioning variables, our blur variables, our spread variables. We're also going to look at our border width variables, and lastly, our opacity variables. It's a great lesson today if you're building out your own design system or just want more practice on Figma variables. Uh, also, too, be sure to join our Slack community. Link will be in the description. Let's dive right into the lesson. Let's start off with our drop shadow variables. Now, one thing that's important to note here is now that Figma offers the ability to add variables to your effects, what a lot of designers like to do is break it out between either whether your inner shadow, your drop shadow, your layer blur, your background blur. I also see just overall drop shadows, which would combine your drop shadow and your inner shadow. And then I see blurs, which would combine your layer blur and your background blur. What we like to do to keep things organized is because if we go into our drop shadow effects, we have blur. So what we like to do is combine blur into our drop shadow parent grouping. So you'll see what I mean. Again, this is the way that we do things. You might have things a little bit uh, differently in your design system or within your brand. So what we like to do is, again, we're working within our brand collection. We're not working within our alias collection or our mapped collection, just our brand collection. So uh, we're going to create a number variable that's going to be drop shadow to represent the parent grouping. And then we're going to group them out. So starting with our blur. And then our first variable within that uh, folder will be none, which will be set to zero. Let's then create a, another number variable. Again, we're still within the blur group, which will be our extra small. We're going to set that to four. We're going to create a small, and we're going to set that to 16. So a little bit of a larger jump there. Then we're also going to go with a medium. We're going to set that to 24. Let's also go with a large. And we're going to set that to 48. And then let's go with an extra large, and we're going to set that uh, to 64. Now, if we draw just a basic square, let me get rid of this. There we go. Go into our effects. And then I can apply for the blur, 64. So again, it's a little bit larger, it's very faint around the edges. Or we can apply something a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter, our extra small uh, which is very faint. And there you go. There's how we like to structure uh, our blur variables. Uh, next, let's look at our spread variables. So when it comes to our spread variables, this is a little bit of a unique trick because what we actually like to do, and I'll give you a quick demo here, is so if we're working with our spread, it's very rare um, to see negative colors in any type of variable, you know? But what with, when it comes to spread is we actually do like to work with our negative colors. So here's a quick example as to why. So when it comes to your spread, if I set that to 24, look what happens. That drop shadow is very prominent. This as it stands is very, very difficult to work with or design around. Even with something like eight, it's still a little bit tough. You know, the, the drop shadow is very prominent. But what, what we can do is if we make it a negative number, and let me go back to 24, because this will offer a little bit of a better visual. If we make it a ne negative number, look what happens. It's much, it's much softer. It's much more faint. Even if we look at the negative eight, it's still much fainter than it was before. So it gives us more room uh, in, term, in terms of uh, combinations that we could have with our designs without having to worry about a real overpowering um, drop shadow spread. So we're going to take uh, the same approach here. So let's uh, go into number variable for our drop shadow. This one will be our spread, and we're going to set the first spread. There we go. Can't type today. To none, just like that. And let's apply uh, that back. Then let's go ahead, uh, and we're going to do, again, still working with our t-shirt sizing approach, our extra small for, of negative 4, our small of negative 8, our medium negative 12, our large, negative 16. Then we're going to go with our uh, extra large, which we're going to set to negative 20. And then we're going to set our extra, extra large to that negative 24. There we go. So now I can go ahead and apply these different spread shadows, keeping that drop shadow uh, nice and consistent. Uh, and nice and faint. Next, let's look at our positioning variables. 
So next, let's look at our positioning variables. And when it comes to positioning var variables, this is all really about personal preference. Um, so if we go into our effect here, so your positioning variables are going to be your X and Y. What I like to do is I like to work with positive numbers here. So let, what we're going to do is let's actually just get rid of uh, our spread entirely. Oops, I applied the blur. Let's apply the spread. And uh, let's, uh, again, this is just to visualize things here. I'll make it a little bit. We'll go with our small. And let's set this to just 100. So one of the reasons why I don't like to work with negative numbers is if I hit a negative 8 for our X and a negative 8 for our Y, it's very rare to see a drop shadow that comes from that angle. Again, at least in my experience, I'm sure it's out there. What I actually really like to have happen with my drop shadows is if I set this to 8 and then set this to 8, is I like to have my drop shadows approach from the bottom and from the right. Again, that's just my personal preference. You might like to have it, the drop shadow approach from the left, so come from this side instead of the right side, but still be from the bottom. And if that's you, you know, negative variable numbers are totally fine uh, to have happen here. And there's a couple of different approaches that you can take. So one of the approaches that you can take is have a positioning variable for your x-axis and then another for your y-axis. So in this case, how this might happen is your y-axis would be, um, or your y variable would be positive, but then your x-axis might be negative. Again, offer a little bit of differentiation, but because I like to have my drop shadow approaching from the right-hand side, the way I'm going to work it is that all of my variables um, for my positioning variables are both going to be positive. So that's a little bit of the rationale as to why I'm working with the numbers that I am today, but this does not mean that you necessarily need to follow this exact approach. So what I am going to do to start off with here is I'm going to go, uh, again, still within uh, our drop shadow, drop shadow slash positioning. And then we're going to set our first, again, still to none, still following the t-shirt size approach as we did uh, with our spread and our blur. So we have our none. Then we're going to work with a extra, extra, extra small, which we're going to set to two. Then we're going to work with an extra, extra small, which we're going to set to four. Let's go with an extra small, which we're going to set to eight. Let's then work with a small, which we're going to set to 12. Let's work with a medium, which we're going to set to 16. Let's work with a large, which we're going to set to 20. Then we're going to do an extra large, which we're going to set to 24. Then we work with an extra, extra large, which we're going to set to 32. And then lastly, an extra, extra, extra large, which we'll set to 48. Now what I can do is let's mix and match some different combinations here. So our spread, let's maybe go with a extra large, our blur let's maybe go with an xl and then let's set this to for our positioning variables maybe a 16 and a 32. again lots of different combinations uh, we can work with here that's a little bit strong for me so let's maybe drop this to uh, something like 50 percent and maybe we can also adjust uh, the color as well there we go and that personally is a drop shadow that i like and there we have it. That completes uh, our drop shadow collection. Uh, next, we're going to look at our border width variables. With our drop shadow and effect variables out of the way, let's now look at building out uh, some variables for our border width. So let's go into our local variables and under all variables. Again, still within our brand collection, let's create a number of variable that we're going to call border width. And our first will be set to none. Again, still following that t-shirt size approach. Let's create another one for small, which we're going to set to one. Let's create a medium, which we're going to set to two. And then let's create a large, which we're going to set to four. So now what we can do is when we close this, go into our stroke. When applying it, you hit this one right here, but you actually two finger tap and you apply that variable. And now what I can do is look for my border width variables and apply those variables accordingly. That easy. Next and lastly, let's look at our opacity variables. Lastly, now let's look at our opacity variables. 
So when it comes to our opacity variables, one thing that I like to do is I actually like to go at 25% uh, percent increments. Again, so it would be, let me just close this here. So you have our 100, our 75, our 50, and then our 25. And then of course, our zero. And the reason being is there is a, a noticeable jump between each of those variables or values. If I was to go, let's say every 10 to maybe uh, an 80, oops, an 80, and then a 70, you know, the difference is very faint there. I, I can't really think or have, haven't really seen a use case or a desire to make use of an 80% variable or positive variable versus 70%. Not to say that there isn't one, I just think it's more rare and I like to keep my variable library nice and organized. So that being said, let's go into, uh, again, still within our brand collection, let's create a number variable for opacity. And our first one will be none, which of course, or no opacity, zero. Let's then, again, still following the t-shirt sizing approach. Uh, let's create a small, which we're going to set uh, to 25. Let's create a medium, oops, medium, which we're gonna set to 50. Well, then we're gonna go with a large, which we're gonna set to 75. And then finally, an extra large, which we're gonna set to 100. Now, when it comes to uh, your opacity variables, you can't do it at the individual fill level uh, itself. Um, what you actually need to do um, is actually go into the pass through where you can, again, two finger tap uh, and then apply that variable accordingly. So now I can choose between all of my different opacity types. What's going on, everyone? Just want to encourage everyone to sign up for our community at uicollective.co, uh, where you'll get access to myself and Mike for any questions you might have on tokens, variables, or more. And we have a ton of great free resources with more on the way. Uh, so join the community, stay notified. Hope to see you online.